Congratulations! You've mastered the art of giving a kick-ass presentation in front of a huge audience. But what happens when you try to deliver online? Hello world, Prof Mike Green back with part three in our presentation series, Kick-Ass Presentations. Today, we're gonna extend part two, 10 keys to kick ass, but we're talking about online presentations. That could be a pre-recorded video like this. That could be an online webinar, uh, you know, using something like WebEx, uh, Blackboard Collaborate, or Google Plus Hangouts. If you're one of my students, that's what you're gonna be using later this semester. So uh, this works in a variety of scenarios, which we will discuss as we get through, but let's talk about the 10 keys. Key one, more, not hair, but visuals. You want to overcompensate for not being there in person. And several of the keys will kind of come back to this concept of overcompensating for not being there. Let your visuals help you out here, okay? Make them more uh, beautiful, more over the top, less bullets, less boring, right? Not only they don't have you walking around, something visually to look at, all they've got is this little teeny window that you give them. Okay, and if you give them something boring to look at, they're gone. Use a webcam if the technology supports it. Most do nowadays, WebEx, all the major live platforms. If you're doing something pre-recorded, try to get some software that allows you to record both yourself via webcam and the presentation uh, all at once. Key two, congratulations, you've just been accepted to acting school. Whether you're in the audio only, or a video like with a webcam like I'm doing here. Uh, it's, it really is like being on stage. You need to, again, overcompensate, more vocal range. Uh, it's, it's much more than just talking to someone next to you. Although some people will say having someone sitting across the webcam, behind the webcam, having a real person to talk to is very helpful. You wanna still amplify uh, your vocal expression and your visual expression as if you were on TV. I've got an audio sample here from audible.com. They make audiobooks. And uh, take a listen and see, you know, this person is reading a, uh, some fiction, which is not really common in the presentations we give, but just notice how different each of the voices sounds. To about a quarter billion people. Lazo offered the printed report again. According to geeks, you've got the closest tale, sir. Okay, I got it, I got it. Jordan grabbed the printout and clicked on one of the three LCD monitors on his desk. He brought up GCCS, the global command and control system that tracked the real-time location of all friendly forces in the field. Look into the camera. Don't, you know, drill and stare into it. You want to be kind of natural, but you want to look into the camera. That lens is the eye of your viewer. If you've watched American Idol, you hear the judges tell the contestants every year, you've got to connect with the people at home. And you do that by looking into that lens. Uh, know your gestures, but you know, it doesn't really do me any good to tell you that something is this big because you've lost all context. So know where your boundaries are uh, for your camera. And this is kind of tough if you don't have a live video to kind of watch. Uh, and also, just because of the way cameras look and, and the way they work, my hands look monstrous huge right now, and that's just kind of weird. So you don't want to tell your audience something like this a bunch. You kind of want to keep things close to you just because of the physics of camera lenses, so be careful about that. Key number three is it's time to step your game up. You're competing against so much more now, and I don't mean other people trying to say the same thing as you. I mean your audience members' smartphone, their work phone, their email, their computer, the internet, cat videos on YouTube, whatever. You're competing against everything else that's trying to get their attention. And so you've got to step it up and be the most appealing thing that they're currently trying to choose between. It's so easy now to just uh, get in that webinar, start watching that YouTube video, whatever, put it on the other screen, put it in the background, I'll just listen to it and check my email. You don't want that as a presenter. You want people paying attention. So give them something to pay attention to. Key four is to keep it simple, especially if you're a one-man show. If you're trying to do a live webinar all by yourself, be really comfortable with A, your PowerPoint, your presentation, 
and be the technology. And the first couple of times, it's so much easier. You'll be so relieved to just keep it simple. Don't do a crazy PowerPoint. Don't do a, you know, don't try to use a new technology every time. Try to get some consistency, something you can feel comfortable with so that you don't get frustrated, which we'll talk about in a later key. If you're fortunate enough to have someone helping you or you have a team managing the technology, well, then we can start to you know, use some more technology tools, maybe use a more advanced PowerPoint, try embedding some video. Uh, if you're all by yourself, it's often a lot easier to just almost no animation, A, because some of the tools like WebEx, they don't take all the animations and transitions, so you might lose some stuff anyway, but keep it simple. If you've got links or videos you want to embed, just include the links and give them to the audience members and let them go out. Sometimes that's a lot easier. You can be much smoother and it comes off as, as a better presentation overall. Key five is to be clear, concise, and concrete, not only in the language you use, but the visuals as well. Remember, you might make your PowerPoint to be full screen and it's beautiful, but when it's on YouTube or it's in WebEx or something else, it's gonna be small and you have to design around that. Maybe it's being watched on one of these guys, you know? designed for the small screen uh, font is such a great example of this you know the be clear concise and concrete is actually a hundred and thirty seven point font for me that's how I designed it the five is a thousand point it's as big as my application will let me make font and uh, doesn't necessarily look that big so just kind of keep that in mind when you're designing these visuals also the language you want to use less more powerful words Again, being concise and concrete, that will help you out overall. You don't want to um, to be stumbling, to uh, you know, to struggle. You don't want to do that. Okay, you're going to lose your audience instantly if if you don't you know, have the right words to use. And that's why you absolutely want to practice, practice, practice. I said that in previous videos, and I'll say it again. One main reason you want to practice with online presentations is to help keep yourself from getting frustrated. Guess what, folks? Technology doesn't always work. I know these IT guys were supposed to be geniuses. Uh, sometimes we can work magic and sometimes we can't. Sometimes the technology breaks. Don't get frustrated. Take a deep breath. Calm down. You know this. You've got your presentation. Maybe you've got some notes uh, on paper. Maybe you've got the presentation notes in your software. Have a way to continue even if the technology doesn't help you. Okay, if you can't give your PowerPoint, well, that's fine. Still give your presentation. Uh, have a PDF version of your PowerPoint slides. Maybe you can send the audience there as a link. Have workarounds. Have a plan B. Have a plan C in case the technology doesn't help you out. And always test the technology before. If it's a live event, this is so crucial. Get in 30 to 60 minutes ahead of time, if you can. Test everything, run through your entire presentation. Test your audio. If you've got multiple presenters or a moderator, test their audio. You wanna make sure you're perfect so that you can start on time and move forward and not uh, be wasting your audience members' time or just uh, be frustrated because something's not working and didn't have a chance to get it fixed before showtime. Key number seven is don't go overboard. In part two of this series, I talked about Presentation Mountain. You can go deep, you can go wide with content. And this is more important than ever when it comes to online presentations. Distraction is like a huge shark just waiting to steal away your viewer when you overboard, when you push them overboard with, with content. If you give them too much at once, uh, they can just kind of glaze over and they're out the door. If you're live, be sure to give uh, your audience members an outline up front. That's really helpful. But if you're pre-recorded, something like this, you can still use an outline, but I recommend you keep it as short as possible. Okay, the first 10 seconds of that YouTube video or whatever site you're using are so crucial. If you don't capture your audience then, there's a good chance they're not going to watch the rest of it, no matter how good the content is. Key eight, silence. It's not golden, preferred, or optional, but required. Imagine listening to me like this. It's kind of 
a pain in the butt, isn't it really? It's much more difficult, much more distracting, whether it's pen clicks, tapping. If you've got the opportunity, if you're using a tool that has the ability to mute everyone else's microphone, use it, okay? You control the environment. Make sure that you're in a quiet environment. Don't have the TV playing in the background. Don't have music on. Don't be wearing jewelry that's dangling and making a bunch of noise. You want to have the most quiet environment possible. And then when it's time for someone else to engage, if you've muted them, most of these technology tools have the ability to unmute and they can interact with you and whatnot. But it's much more difficult for someone to pay attention online if there's background noise. So you want to cut it out as much as possible. Another thing, get yourself an on-air sign like you see here. It could just be something scribbled on a piece of paper and taped to your door. Let those around you know that you're recording. If you're at the office or even at home, uh, it's very disruptive to you, the presenter, to have someone interrupt you. Knock on your door, your phone rings, whatever. Do what you have to do to remove all distractions from your environment and from your attendees' environments as well. Key nine, how do you do Q&A when your auditorium looks like this, when your auditorium is the wall behind your webcam. That's what I'm staring at right now. This is where technology can really help out. Uh, most of the tools, if it's a live environment, have, uh, you know, they have Q&A functionality. They have a chat function. Your audience can have a mic or a webcam. Lots of them have little raised hands, uh, you know, dinging, try to get your attention as a presenter. There's lots of technology tools out there that give you that possibility. If you're using a tool that doesn't have something like that, use a hashtag. Uh, social media is all around us. Create a unique hashtag just for your presentation. Tell your audience up front, hey, this is what I want you to use. At the end, I'll go search all the networks and find questions. And we'll come back to them. It's nothing more frustrating for an audience member than to not get your question answered. And sometimes they might have a question up front and uh, it never gets answered and then you lose them and that's really unfortunate. If you're able to have a moderator, it's even better for you. They can be monitoring questions, even answering them if they know your presentation and your content. They can be handling all that for you while you're moving forward with the presentation. If a great question comes up, then they can interrupt you and, and pass it along and you can share the answer. But that is the most ideal scenario. If you can get a partner uh, a coworker, whatever, someone to help moderate Q&A for you, that can be an extremely uh, beneficial both to you, allows you to concentrate, but to your audience members as well. The final key, key 10, engage your audience members. If you've ever seen somebody playing video games, they are intensely engaging. Uh, it's You have to pull them away from them. You want to be, uh, you want to try to imitate that. Whether it's powerful visuals, whether it's your animated voice, sometimes those aren't enough. Try using the technology tools. Technology can be very beneficial for engagement as well. Uh, many of the live platforms have polling and quizzing technologies. You can send polls to people's smartphones. There's many technologies that allow you to get some interaction and some engagement with your audience. Make use of those when you're comfortable. Again, you don't necessarily want to try all this the first time, the first go around because you can get frustrated. But as you get comfortable with the, pre the technology you're using and your presentation, increase the amount of engagement opportunities you have between you and your audience. Have a discussion. If your audience members have microphones, again, and you're comfortable being interrupted, allow them to interrupt you. Use multiple presenters. Uh, if you've got two or three people, that little auditory cue, oh, this is a different voice. Let me come back and pay attention to them. Switching up every couple of minutes can really help uh, pull your audience members back in. And that's it. 10 keys to helping you deliver kick-ass presentations online. Back to my original question. What do you think the differences are between delivering a presentation in person, more traditional, versus online? Comment below and thanks for watching.